I'm known as the video guy. But there are days and weeks where I just don't want to make a video for whatever reason. I want to do something else. I'm just... Or you get caught in comparison. I'm, I'm burnt out. I'm just not feeling creative. Yeah. But that's not going to get me where I want to go. I just pony up, turn on the camera, do the best that I can that day and move on and you get through it. Yeah. But you have to do what you don't want to do a lot if you want to be successful. Welcome to the LO Code Podcast, where we talk about everything from marketing to just general loan bullshit. Today, we're going to talk about good habits that make you more money and bad habits that actually make you unsuccessful. So Jess, let's go into these habits. Yeah, well, I wanted to bring this up at this point in the new year because most people created goals for the new year, whether it's business related or not, and they've already fallen off the wagon. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to hit on creating good habits. Um, I think that we've been successful in this in the past and we have good habits. We have some things that we have been working on for this new year. Right. Um, and if people are watching right now, if they are having bad habits, it, don't just throw everything in the trash and be like, screw it, I just can't do it. You just have to keep working towards your goals. Like I think a lot of people just like they make one mistake or get one little slip and then they just go on a downslide. Well, I love the tire analogy. So if you, you ca your car blows a tire, are you going to slash the other three tires or are you going to fix that tire and get back on the road? Exactly. And it's the same thing. So whether you've completely blown it or, you know, maybe you're just not on the track that you want it to be, it's never too late. Like start today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next Monday. Mm -hmm. Just start today. Start over and keep moving. Yes. Yep. So what would you say are the biggest good habits that we need to focus on? Um, well, OK, so this one, a lot of people really focus on having a morning routine, but I say that that's not for everybody. So I think that you need to first get really real with yourself and see if your habits that you're trying to create are even in line with the life that you want. Like, I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. I'm not I don't want to. I'm not going to do it. But I am really productive at nighttime after the kids go to bed. Right. So that works for me, and that's where I'm going to focus my attention. And Alex Hermosi said something very similar to this. He said that very specific routines, morning routines or night routines that have to take place to be successful are a big hindrance to your success. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap because then if you miss one of the 10 things, you're like, Every I failed. Gone. I did horribly. Yes. But there are, I do have non-negotiables. Like coffee. Like coffee, yes, <laughs> it is like coffee. So I'm going to have that coffee every right. day, but it's just like brushing your teeth. You don't question it. You don't go, hm, today, I just don't think I'm going to do it. And so that's one of the things that, you know, you and I have been working on is we got off of our habit of working out every day, mostly because of health issues. But then we're like, it was the, t it was the car thing. We're like, oh, if we can't work out to the capacity that we want to or that we were used then to, why do it? then why do it? And we instead of saying of us, this is what I can do. Yeah, today. both of us really trapped ourselves in that for a long time. So now it's like, OK, today I can go for a walk or, hey, my body's really mad today. I'm just going to stretch and do some yoga. So no matter what, trying to just get back into that habit of doing something and then building on it. Mm -hmm. And like the Atomic Habits book, a lot of people and I'm just paraphrasing here based off what I remember. A lot of people will set a very big goal, which is great. Yeah. And then if they're not seeing the pace to reach that goal, they get really down on themselves. And like, it seems like insurmountable. Like, how am I going to get there? Rather than what are the actions that I need to do right now that's going to get me there eventually? And it could take a long time. Like even, you know, we talk about marketing a lot. We, you know, we've been doing business for a long time. And there have been periods where we're working really hard for months and we're seeing returns from it, but it is not even close to what we had expected. But then all of a sudden we're like overwhelmed with how much business comes in right. or whatever the case may be. You know, say that it is like working out. You're working out every day. You're eating really good. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden one week you lose a bunch of weight and you're like, what the hell happened? Uh, but that's just the way that it right. works. And almost like it's like that analogy, too, is that overnight success happens after 10 years of hard work. That's so, yeah, that's so true. Right. It's the habits, but that's what it is. It's the habits that just keep building and building. It's the progress that gets made behind the closed doors. And this is something that really gets me is I tie my worth and my success on results. Yeah. And I have to actively work on detaching the results from my effort. 
Because if you put your effort in and don't see immediate gratification, it's extremely easy to say, screw it, I'm done, this doesn't work. When in reality, if you just kept pushing, the results are just around the corner. So I've kind of changed my mind frame to have almost like a daily gratification. Like if I do these things that I'm supposed to do today, I feel really good about myself. And I'm like, that's good for you because I do know that it is coming later down the road. So I try to tie it into that. How is, you know, if I'm accomplishing everything, good job, Jessica, gold star. Exactly. So what it all comes back to is having your goals. Yeah. But then also determining what habits are going to get you to that goal, regardless of is the goal, are you are you actually on pace for the goal? And I think another thing that's worth talking about is believing that you deserve it and that you're capable of it. Because a lot of people have these goals, but in the back of their mind, they're saying, something, I can't do this because, or this isn't working out for me because of this. And that's just not accurate. Like, if you look at some of the most successful people, some of them, I'm like, how, how, how? <laughs> like, but the, it's their belief in themselves. Yes. And that's like one of the like key this thing factors. I yes, you're, you're tapping. He's tapping for the people that are listening. Tapping on his forehead. I... So I, <laughs> I, 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 I looked at this and it's more so of a habit, right? Yeah. And so me, I, I equate habits to physical things usually. Mm -hmm. And so there's this hokey pokey thing of unlocking your chakra. Right. Yeah. And so by tapping on your forehead and envisioning what you want to achieve out of life, but not just what it is, but how you're going to get there. Yeah. And so like what I do is I tap on my head and then I think about the end result that I want. But on top of that, I think of all the things that are going to take place to make that end result happen. And then also think about the intangibles of like when things aren't going well, I'm going to find a solution fast. When when people work with me. They love working with me. They have an amazing experience. They tell all of their friends. So I try to think like five layers deep when I do this yeah. and just try to put my desire into reality first, just like how an athlete envisions them playing a sport. It's like manifestation. Yes. So a lot of people think like manifestation, like, oh, if I wish hard enough, it will come. But that's not what it's about. It's about getting your brain in the right space to be open to those things that are the coming and to take advantage of it. Words, it's, to the opportunities. Yeah, it's it's actually, you know, a lot of people think that it's hokey, but it's your reticular activating system. I'm pretty sure that's it. Pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty positive that's it. But your brain, you know, it's like the whole car thing. You think about red cars, you see red cars. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that if you think about the outcome right. of your goal or whatever, you're going to find ways to get there. And what I find interesting about us, especially me, is I can be a very, very, very linear thinker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we have an amazing ability to pivot because we open up our mind to opportunity. Yes. And it's not always an easy thing to train. But if you can open up your mind and accept whatever the world is giving to you, and how can you take that and then mold it into what your end result is? Even though your, your path to get there is different, the end result can be the same if you open up your mind and you start doing the habits that it takes to get there. Well, I was reading a book, Mel Robbins. Um, it wasn't the high five habit. It was like the five, four, three, two, one. And it's mainly the whole point of it is just take action, move forward. But she has a quote from it that um, it made me laugh when she said it. If you want to improve your life, you've got to get off your ass and do it. And it's just so blunt. But how true is that? And I think that's part of the secret to our success is we just do it, just do it. whether we want to or not, whether we're, we're like, mm, is this going to work? There's no it, it doesn't matter because at least you're trying. It will not work if you don't try. And trust me, when it doesn't work, it's not like we're impervious to the feeling failure. Oh, I yeah, we feel it. <laughs> and you can get angry, you can get frustrated, you can get mad, you can get sad. That's fine. It's all normal. But it's what you do afterwards that counts. Can you get back up? Can you keep going? I mean, if people are struggling with this, they need to watch Rocky. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite. I actually have all five on VHS still. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we live our life is yeah. like Rocky. It is. Um, and that's one of the things that I tell myself all the time when I get stuck. I didn't make it this far to only make it this far. Mm -hmm. Keep going because it's hard and 
believe me, I've gotten in my funks, especially this last year. It's been a hard market. We moved across the country. We've been sick. It's just been one hit after another. But man, I can't give up now. I, I have made it too far to just give up and say this is it. Right. We'll keep and pushing ourselves. We've quit hundreds, if not thousands of times in our mind. But what do we do the next minute or the next hour or the next day? We get it back up and do it again. Or we pivot. There have been things where we're like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Low credit. I'm going to do this. Low again. credit, dirty FHA deals when right before COVID hit was our jam. Yeah. We crushed them. Yep. All the lenders had no appetite for it anymore. And we had to completely pivot our whole business model mm -hmm. on the spot. And within a month, our average credit poll went from 500 something yeah. to seven. Oh, 600s to 720, 740. Mid seven. Mid -seven. Yeah all based off of manifesting it and then taking action that are going to attract those type of clients. Yeah. So it's not just, hey, this is what we want. We're going to get it. We changed our marketing tactics. We changed um, kind of our presence, our message. We changed, we rebranded everything at that time. Um, it, we just pivoted. And it's not like we wanted to. We enjoyed who we were working with. Yeah. But at the time, they were cutting programs left and right when COVID hit. So exactly. you just couldn't even do them anymore. So that's just a real world, world example of seeing an opportunity, pivoting, making a change, and then doing the behaviors that are going to get the result once you have to make that pivot. Yeah. I think it's worth bringing up that you have to do things that you don't want to do over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things, especially in this business, that I don't want to do but I'm not going to get better. You're not going to be the best if you don't just, you either hire someone to do it or you trudge and get it done. And that's where the magic happens though, is when you just keep going. Exactly. I'm known as the video guy, but there are days and weeks where I just don't want to make a video for whatever reason. I want to do something else. I'm just- Or you get caught in comparison. I'm, I'm burnt out. I'm just not feeling creative, yeah. but that's not going to get me where I want to go. I just pony up, turn on the camera, do the best that I can that day and move on and you get through it. Yeah. But you have to do what you don't want to do a lot if you want to be successful. And we all make excuses, but that's what it is, is an excuse. And I think that there are times where you have a valid excuse. You know, you're supposed to be shooting, you get the flu. It is what it is. You can't do it that day. But then you have to jump right back on it when you can. And you can't say it's the little excuses, though, that get people. It's not ever the big excuses. It's the little ones. Right. Well, let's put a pin in this and we'll come back and do a whole episode on things that you can do to get yourself to do the stuff you don't want to do. I think that'll be a good one. Okay. So, so yeah, so thanks for watching this episode. If you want to learn more about us or you want some of the free resources we have for marketing, go to the locode.com. There's a bunch of awesome stuff on there. And I think that's it for the podcast today. Yeah. Just do it. Habits. Yeah.